Hello and welcome to this week's vlog. So just checking back in with Nigel, a couple of days since the last little bit about him. Last night on our Icarus Falconry Adopters Evening, where we have a little bit of a kind of a, a little mini party really for the people that have adopted the birds and helped us keep the centre going really this year. He was a little bit slow to strangers, so we're gonna give a little whistle around in the trees here. A little bit of free flying and just see if he'll fly to Georgia and not just me. Just keeping that confidence coming up. Remember he spent several months away with his girlfriend in an enclosed Avery. He's just getting used to mingling with us humans again, really. Confidence boost, flying to me, because obviously I'm who he knows, and I've worked with him since he was 16 weeks old. Nigel, that's incredibly lazy. In fact, we're not going to reward him for that, because I don't want him to land on the fences, he's too lazy. Nigel! And he looks far more beautiful when he's gliding down to our guests from the actual treetop. So let's see, there's no wind today, no help. He'll be as lazy as possible. Launch him up at there. So let's just see if he'll fly to George's glove. Nigel! No problem at all. So, as you might remember, try and keep the food hidden in the glove. We want the birds to come back to us because they want to, and a food's an added bonus if it's there and it's not there all the time. If you, of course, show them the food, as we've already discussed earlier in this vlog, if you show them the few food, sometimes and not other times, they won't bother coming when there's no food. They're not going to waste energy if they think it's definitely not there for sure. So cast him off Georgia, let's just see where he ends up. Lovely, that's it. Oh, we have to work hard to get there. And he's really, really unfit of course. Let's go for one more to you and then we'll crack on. He's really unfit because again, it doesn't matter how big an Avery is, despite what people think, they don't really fly around anymore in there than they would if they were tethered on a, onto a block or a perch. Free flying is how to get your birds fit. Oh, cardinal sin. Oh. Jaws has dropped the food. There we go, <laughs> good boy. <laughs> uh, see, women can't multitask either. Right, we'll catch up with you later. We're going to get him some more exercise. Hold the glove out, George, and we'll see where he is. Hi, oh, there he is. Tap the glove then, let him notice. Hi. He can see you there nicely. Let's see, I should imagine it's a confidence thing because I'm not here. Let's get a bit nearer. Nigel! <whistles> I can't see you him, can see you? something down there. Ah, that's the problem. Pheasants on the estate right Nige. now. They're all out running around, they're only youngsters, and these Harry Sorks know where there's an easy meal and a hot meal. Nigel! <whistles> Let's leave him be. Leave him be. Let's go. See you later. Let's see. Okay, try again. Nice. nice. So, like children, dogs, and lots of other animals we're training, with birds of prey, standing there calling and waving a bird that's not coming to you is a completely fruitless exercise. You're teaching that bird, ah oh well, the falcon is always there, I can do what I like, and when I've had a good look round, they'll still be there waiting, just like a dog will do. You need to make that call or that whistle mean something, and it needs to mean something in the moment, instantly, and trigger that response. And you're not gonna get that by just standing shouting at them for three hours long. Often walking away, just like with the dog, sort of creates that little bit of insecurity. Oh, crikey, let's, let's catch up. We're gonna miss out on the action. Absolutely beautiful. Great to see Nigel back in the air doing his thing. We'll fly him some more. We're here at Icarus Falcon Wing. And in half an hour, we're expecting several of our adopters. And what we actually run, as you'll see some of the advertising, if that's the right word, 
for what we do in our adopters packs and you can adopt a bird for a 12 month period you get quite now you get an adopters pack and as part of that adoption pack you get to attend our adopters evening which we run once a year and obviously not everyone can make it because we're all too busy but for those that can they can come along to our adopters evening we fly some birds for them and we have drinks we have some nibbles and we just have a darn good chat about how we spend that adopters money and what's been going on here at the center since the last time those people visited some it may be since last year some it might have been last week and some of our adopters as you can imagine actually come on our experience days quite regularly for half days and full days and they know full well what's going on because they're here so often other people it's a one-off thing and have received it as a present but hopefully we have a good evening the weather's nice we'll report back some more and we will crack on right now because i'm busy you're busy we'll see you in a little while Oh, wow, what wonderful guests. I had a great time flying. Spotted Owl, Spotted Eagle Owl, Bentley the Hooded Vulture, Harris Hawks, and just all for fun tonight. And they stayed, you know what? These guys stayed so long. Just We just had a good old chat, putting the world to rights and how hard it's been during COVID. What wonderfully supportive clients, guests, people that come here to Icarus Falconry. We're really privileged. We know they are and they know they are. They love they love the experience days and being up close and personal to birds of prey. That, you know, sometimes we take a little bit for granted. And it's been absolutely fantastic to just have a good old chat, a good old natter, socially distancing, lots of things in place because of COVID, but we've just had fun. Fantastic. I'm just documenting Icarus at night time. <laughs> Dark. It's scary. Look at these two. Oh, you're in the, you're in the thing. Look at these two hornets. We thought they were fighting in the air, but obviously not. Almost looks like one's feeding the other one, but who knows? It's feeling a bit domineering, isn't it? <laughs> wow. Oh, it's fine. Good eyesight on that, isn't it? How you watch that one fly away. <laughs> <laughs> so have a look at these. They're feeding away on rotten plums. We've got lots of red admirals and other butterflies, but fantastic hornets. Absolutely amazing. And these two have been sort of sparring and look at this. All all the time sparring with each really? other. Amazing. Look at the size compared to this. Little common wasp, tiny in comparison to those hornets. So you set up a nice little wildlife pond because of the smooth and great crested newts you find in the Falconry Centre. Give them somewhere to breed next year, and then buy your eagle next to the eagle's bath. Cute baby. Maybe the wildlife pond was a walk too far. A little bit of a change around. Now the two Harris Hawks, Nigel and Zara, are out of their summer breeding aviary, which didn't really come to fruition at all, apart from some infertile eggs. So Luna, is now upgraded to an even larger aviary and actually it's got this dark background which for the people coming around on a Sunday might make it difficult to see her she's nestled at the back but as a European eagle owl she's going to really enjoy having a really cosy corner like that for sure we'll see how she gets on in there and report back Above the waterline, I'm kind of the wrong side of this bit of log. Because the other side, everything will drop into the water. I'm pretty sure she knows what she's doing. Cool day, about 15, 16 degrees. Maybe a little warmer now. And I'm sure, like me, she can feel 
autumn's here, winter's coming, and hopefully, unlike me, she's probably aware her time flying like only a dragonfly can is coming to an end. First hard frost, and it's her offspring, the dragonfly larva, and it'll continue her name. Build it and they will come. Remember the wildlife pond here at the Falkenry Centre? It cost us nothing. Everything, oh no, actually, two rolls of turf. Everything else was recycled to make this pond. She's hawking around me now. Let's see if we can catch her on camera. Actually, right behind me, she's going to land on me if I'm not careful. There she is. Look at that. Again, at abdomen, a ovipositor, chicken. I can only think to egg laying sites or feeling maybe with it. The end of her tail for the best possible place to lay those eggs. Now in my mind it's normally just on the water surface or below on stems of plants. That where she started from. Now I'm moving really slowly. to this girl's, to her eyesight, which works far faster than my eyesight. My slow movements are certainly enough for her to attract her attention. I'm going dizzy, I'm sure you guys are. 